Issue 30, Getting Rich Quick. My husband and I put our life savings into a surefire business venture. A smooth-talking gentleman we knew told us we would make a fortune. This fellow sold manufacturing equipment, and he talked us into starting a small plant. We were to buy the machines from him, and he would teach us how to run the business. He even offered to hire an experienced factory manager. I could write a book on what happened. The machines quickly broke down, and we had to buy new parts, which cost us a lot of money we hadn't planned on spending. The plant manager that he hired turned out to be an alcoholic who stayed home three days a week. My husband and I both put in 12 to 14 hour days and we worked like slaves. At the end of seven months we were broke and the business was in debt. We had to mortgage our home and borrow money from my father-in-law. Three months later we were broke again. So the man who talked us into the business offered to buy us out for 10 cents on the dollar and we had no choice but to accept. Today, that man is running the plant himself and making money hand over fist. We later learned he owns four other factories which he took over in the same way. We've consulted a lawyer, but legally, the man is on safe ground. In the aftermath, my husband has developed high blood pressure and ulcers. Being around our kids makes him nervous and he hasn't spoken a civil word to me in weeks. We're still deeply in debt and a lot of our old friends avoid us. The whole episode just makes me sick. Comprehension One, what kind of business did the couple go into? Two, what happened to their business? What happened to them? Three, what happened to the man when he took over their factory? Let's talk. One, who do you think is more responsible for the consequences, the man or the couple? Two, what did the couple do wrong, if anything? Was it just bad luck? Three, do you think the man has a guilty conscience? Should he? Why or why not? Four, how can the couple get even with the man? What would you do? Five, how could you avoid having the couple's problems, do you think? Six, is there any quick, sure way to make a fortune? If so, what is it? If not, why not? Opinion Samples One, laws should be passed to protect the public from false claims. Of course, people should be given the means to gain access to the truth so they can make decisions based on accurate information. But in the end, people must accept the consequences of their own folly. No one should ever invest his entire life savings in any scheme in which he does not have sound, first-hand experience. No one should ever be surprised if his business fails, even if he has done everything right. There are no sure things, no shortcuts to genuine success. All is risk. The best we can do is lower the risk as far as possible by applying common sense and expertise to the problem at hand and then taking our chances. Question, who succeeds and who fails in business? Two, what the smooth talker did to her husband was reprehensible, but what her husband is doing to himself is worse. Fortunes are made and lost every day. When businessmen go bankrupt, some commit suicide, others make themselves sick with worry but still others pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and go on. The ability to roll with the punches is what separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls. Question. Who is able to get over life's challenges and who cannot? Issue 30. Getting Rich Quick. Someone I met last week just told me about a get-rich scheme that he's privy to. 
he doesn't have enough money himself to finance his participation, so he wants me to join him in the venture. What do you think? Offhand, I think it would be the stupidest decision you ever made. Why? First off, you don't know this man very well. How can you trust him? We do business all the time with perfect strangers every time we buy stock. The people who put money into Microsoft in the beginning are all multi-millionaires now. Even then, they were all affluent people who had at their disposal some capital that they could afford to lose. They probably put money into many other enterprises as well, but lost money. That's what speculation means, risking that which is unnecessary in hopes for a big payoff. Then what's the difference between the stock market and gambling at the racetrack? At least one of the horses is bound to win. Some better will always win there, which is not always true for stocks and bonds. But on average, investors always do well over time. No, the market tends to strengthen over time, but not necessarily individual investors. Maybe the market is going up, but the companies I've invested in may all be going bankrupt. But what about Microsoft? Betters at the racetrack can choose between horses that are likely to win and those that aren't. Each individual sure thing doesn't pay off very well because there is little risk involved, but in the aggregate is likely to make some money. The long shots almost always lose, but every once in a while one of them comes in and makes a huge profit for his backers. But the ones who constantly bet on the long shots are guaranteed suckers who will lose their shirts day in and day out. Then what do you think I should do? If the guy I know is right and I turn down this opportunity, and then someone else takes him up on it and makes a fortune, I'd feel pretty stupid. Don't you think you'll feel awfully bad after you throw away all your hard-earned money? Well, yes, of course. That's why I don't know what to do. Okay. First, take a good hard look at your own financial situation and determine just how much you can afford to lose if worse comes to worse. Don't go beyond that figure, no matter what happens. All right, I think that's smart. Then what? Don't rush into anything until you check out the situation. Look into this man's background. Find out if he has a track record. Maybe he's a crook who has defrauded many in the past. If so, clearly don't get involved. What if he has no track record at all? Isn't that like a credit agency? It doesn't know if a prospective borrower is a bad risk unless he's already failed to pay his debts, or like someone who can't get a job without experience, but can't get any experience without a job. Yes, it is the same. I never said that any decision is risk-free. We always have to take some chance, but you have to reduce the risk as far as possible. So what if the man checks out? Find out as much as you can about the opportunity. Don't be afraid to seek professional advice. The more thoroughly you do your homework, the better off you're likely to be. Everything you've said makes sense. Do you have any more words of wisdom for me? Most importantly of all, don't be blinded by greed. Keep your eyes wide open and take your time before you make up your mind. Questions. One. Why would making this investment be the stupidest decision you ever made? Two, how can one reduce one's risk in making an investment? Three, what is the best advice of all?